Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Meeting Rooms 2. It is a medium. Let's get right into it. Given an array of meeting time intervals, intervals where intervals of i equals start of i, end of i, return the minimum number of conference rooms required. Okay, so we have a list of all of the times where the meetings are happening and we need to return how many rooms are required. So example one, given intervals 0, 30, 5, 10, 15, 20, we output two because 0, 30 will be in room one and then 5, 10 would overlap. So we need another room for that. And 15, 20 could go in room two right after 5, 10 is done. Example two, we have 7, 10, 2, 4. Here we output one because 2, 4 would happen first in room 1 and then 7, 10 in that same room right after 2, 4 is done. So let's visualize this a little further. We have the range from 0 to 30 and example 1 right here, we have 0 to 30, room 1. Then we have interval 5, 10 in room 2. So row 1 right here is room 1. Each row represents a different room. Here we have room 2, 5, 10. And 15, 20, there's an overlap again with room one, but room two is free, so we can put that interval right after 510. Now let's check out another example a little bit more involved. Um, so we can still use these intervals. Let's just go ahead and add 21, 25, and 0, 15. Yeah. Okay, so with this example, what's the first thing we're going to do? So this is pretty similar to what we did in meeting rooms one. I have it linked down below if you want to check it out. But essentially what we're going to do is sort everything by start time. So to go ahead and sort this, this would be 0, 15, 0, 30, 5, 10, 15, 20, and then 21, 25. This is sorted by increasing start times like that. So this interval list has now become this one right here. Okay. And let's go ahead and see how we would go about fitting it in our interval from zero to 30, our entire range. The first interval we see is 0 to 15, so let's just go ahead and add that in. We go from 0 all the way to 15. Now we have 0 to 30. Can we fit this in our current room? Well, the end time for our current room is 15, but we start at 0. So there is an overlap and we'll need another room. So we go from 0 to 30 for room 2. The next interval is 5, 10. What is our earliest start time in both the rooms? That is 15, but our start time is 5. It's before our earliest end time. And therefore, again, there is overlap from this 5 to 10 section. And we'll need another room yet again. We have 5 to 10. Now we have 15, 20. What is our earliest end time? Well, that is room 3 ending at time 10. And we can fit 15 to 20 right there, 15 to 20. Now, 15 to 20 could have also fit in room one, right? Because room one ends at 15 and 15 onwards, room one is free. Room three as well, it's free 10 onwards. So 15, 20 could have honestly fit either way. Why are we fitting it in room three versus room one? In fact, you know, what if our next interval was 11 to 17. That would fit room three better than room one. Well, this is where the sorting by start time comes in, right? If we had sorted it by start time, then the 11 to 17 would have been before 15 to 20. We would have automatically seen that before this interval. We are guaranteed whatever interval we are on right now, the next one has and it has a start time after hours. And this is actually a proof that we can write out, but just intuitively, if the next one is after our start time, then 
if we just keep putting our intervals in the earliest end time available for us, going with a greedy approach, that makes it more optimal. And we can just keep fitting in more meetings in the same room that we want. So moving on, we have 21 to 25. What is our earliest end time? That is 15. And now in room one, we can fit in 21 to 25. So in total, we needed room one, room two, room three. We would need three rooms for this list of intervals. And essentially, how are we going to go ahead and code this? For this, we want the earliest end time in all of our rooms. What is a data structure that we can use for this? Well, we can use a heap for this. And what that would do is return the minimum at each time. So what a heap does is at index zero, it stores the minimum. So if we upload all of our end times, not upload, if we push all of our end times to our heap, at index zero, we would have the smallest end time. And every time we push, we'll keep getting, we'll keep um, increasing the heap. And every time we pop, we'll keep getting the smallest value in our heap every single time until the heap is empty. So first thing we're going to do is sort everything by their start times. We're going to keep appending the end times to our heap. And the length of the heap is going to represent the number of meeting rooms required. So if we come across an interval and compare the minimum from the heap, so the earliest end time with our start time, if there is an overlap, we then append our end time to the heap. So our heap size has increased. That means we'll need more meeting rooms. If not, if there is no overlap, if the end time is less than equal to the start time of our current interval, then that means we can remove the meeting happening in the room right now and put in our end time signifying our meeting taking place in that room. So let's go ahead and code this up. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of this. Okay, first thing that we want to do is sort intervals by start time. So that is intervals.sort. Um, and what this is doing is sorting it in place and log n. Um, the default for sort takes in the very first index, so index 0, whether it is a list of lists or tuples, it always takes in index zero. So automatically we are sorting by start time increasing. Now we want to have um, meeting rooms. So meeting rooms initialized to one because we know we'll always have a length of one if it is there. We have a constraint that the intervals length has to be greater than equal to one. So we always start with one meeting room. And in our heap, we'll add that meeting rooms end time. So intervals index zero, one. So the end time of our first meeting room. Of course, we want to import heap. So let's import heap Q. And what are we going to do now? So now we want to iterate through. So for start and in intervals, one onward. So we have our first interval already accounted for that one meeting room, the end times already in heap. So for the remaining one onward, we are iterating through start end if heap of zero. So if the minimum end time is less than equal to our start time, that means whatever meeting is happening in that room, we take that out. So heap q dot heap pop from heap. So we are popping from heap. That means we are taking that end time out of heap and removing that meeting. So we now have a room available. And what we do each time, whether or not the start time is available is, or whether or not the room is available, push our own meeting in. So heap q dot heap push onto heap our end time. And now this means that if there is no overlap, we remove the meeting happening there and put our own. So the meeting rooms have stayed constant. However, if there is overlap, then we've just added a meeting room. Now what we're going to do is 
update our meeting rooms. So meeting rooms equals the max of our current meeting rooms and len of heap. And remember, we can never actually decrease. Like, you know, we're always adding on to our heap. And every time we remove, we're also adding on right here. We can never actually reduce the number of rooms we'll need because if all five meetings are overlapping and then we suppose also have three down the line, right? We'll still need five rooms, even though later on we don't use all five anymore. If they all just fit into room one, we still need it overall five rooms, which is why we always keep pushing. And every time we pop, we still end up pushing. Mm -hmm. So now we have these meeting rooms and we finally return meeting rooms. So in this example right here, let's do a quick walkthrough. Heap is going to have 15 and our meeting rooms is going to be one. Now we're over here, start is zero. The earliest end time heap zero is going to be 15. It is not less than equal to zero. So we add the end time of our um, interval onto heap. Meeting rooms is now two. We check the length, max of our current length heap. Go back in here, start is five, end is 10. What is the smallest value in our heap? 15, less than equal to start. It is not, so all we do is push our end value in here. So we push 10. Update the length of meeting rooms to three. Go back in here, 15, 20. What is the smallest value in heap? So heap will actually maintain this. It would organize it in a way that 10 would be at index zero and 10 is less than equal to 15. So we remove 10, we pop, right? We remove the smallest value and we add the end time. So we add 20 and update meeting rooms, it stays three. Go back in here, 21. 21 compared to the smallest value in the heap, 15. We remove that and instead put in our own end time. Again, update meeting rooms, finally return. So you can see that we finally returned three for this example, which is what we found earlier on. So let's erase this run code. Runtime error, int object not subscriptable, if heap zero less than equal to start. Oh, heap should actually be a list with the value of our first end time. So run code, accepted, and submit. And it is accepted as well. So talking about space and time complexity. For time, well, first thing we do is sort this in place. It is n log n. We go through iterating through all of intervals start end. And you know, every time we push or pop to heap, it has to maintain its order. So it's going to be n log k for whatever is in heap, the number of meeting rooms, k is equal to that. Um, what is the worst case for this, right? That means that all the meetings overlap and everything is in our heap. So that is still n log n. That means the overall time for this is n log n. And talking about space, what is the worst possible scenario? Well, we just covered that. What if every single interval overlaps? Then our heap would be storing every single interval. That means our space complexity is O of N. If you have any questions at all, let me know down below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.